Those further steps include allowing the archdiocese to review the redactions. The director of a group of survivors tells me that he and others are really torn about reading the report. I think this report, when you look at some of the individual stories in it, and I know some of the people who made those stories, I, I think it's, it's, it's going to be sickening. David Lorenz, a child sex abuse victim, and now the Maryland director of SNAP, is referring to the state attorney general's 456-page report on child sex abuse by Catholic priests within the archdiocese. I think we're going to see probably 90% of the report, I, I, I would guess. I think we're going to see story after story after story of abuse and cover-up. Circuit Court Judge Robert Taylor will release a redacted version of the report after all interested parties review it, and the redactions are legally sufficient. In a statement released late Monday, the AG's office says, these proposed redactions include individuals who are living, are accused of abuse, hiding abuse, enabling abuse, assisting in the cover-up of abuse, or protecting abusers from the consequences of their actions. This report might help those people start to come forward, seek help, and, and, you know, and, and start their healing process. According to an executive summary of the report, the investigation identified 600 sex abuse victims over an 80-year period. It summarizes the sexual abuse and physical torture perpetrated by at least 158 priests and the archdiocese's response to it. The investigation indicates boys and girls were abused with ages ranging from preschool through young adult. Archbishop William Laurie does not oppose the release, but the archdiocese paid the legal fees for people named in the report who are not accused but wanted to keep the court proceedings secret. The judge wants the redacted report released in time to aid lawmakers before they take final votes on legislation that eliminates the statute of limitations for child sex abuse lawsuits. Under current law, an abuse victim must file by the time they reach 38. The Senate bill caps damages at one and a half million dollars. The Maryland Catholic Conference opposes in a statement calling the legislation both unconstitutional and unfair in its disparate treatment of victims of abuse. They say it could lead to the filing of 3,000 lawsuits at a cost to taxpayers of $2.5 billion. The bill is on the Senate floor for discussion Monday night. The Senate president says eventual passage is likely. You know, provide a real way for victims to uh, have redress and seek justice uh, for harms of the past. There's also a House version of the bill, but legislative leaders tell us it is the Senate version of the measure that is most likely to land on the governor's desk. Reporting from Circuit Court downtown, David Collins, WBAL-TV 11 News.